good painting. My name is Kira Mohawa. And our question says, write your notes on how you can use each of the following alternatives to lecturing, to facilitate teaching and learning in the secondary school classes, implementing the competency-based curriculum. As group 18, we are going to use project-based learning. And under project-based learning, we shall use the following methods, that is grouping students into pairs or trials by using learning beards and using global discussion. A project-based learning, project learning is a teaching method in which students learn by actively engaging in the real world, hands-on projects. I'll begin with how a teacher can use project-based learning by grouping students into pairs or trials. This involves a teacher grouping students in groups of two, two, or three, assigning them different projects, coming up with projects that are actually relevant to what they are studying. And under this method, we have the following processes and steps that are actually followed. That is defining the project, forming groups, setting goals and expectations, providing guidance, encouraging collaboration, and celebrating success. Um, how you can use project-based learning by use of learning beards. A learning beard is a partnership between two students who work together to learn and complete certain tasks. Under this process, um, this as, these are the steps that are followed, defining a project, forming beards, establishing learning objectives, providing resources, monitoring progress, and presenting findings. Um, a global discussion is a collaborative learning activity where students work in small groups and then gradually join other groups to share and discuss their ideas. This technique can be used in PBL to encourage students to share their insights and collaborate with their peers. Here are some of the steps that you can follow to use project-based learning by using a snowball discussion. That is identifying the project, forming small groups, initial discussions, snowball discussions, expanding the discussion, reflections, brainstorming, feedback, and problem solving. Allow me to invite someone else to drive us through the points that have been listed. Thank you so much. Good afternoon. I'm Kia Stella Rumbo. So I'm going to continue from where my colleague has stopped. And we are on the first alternative, which is how can teachers use project-based learning by grouping students into pairs. So under this, we have the following steps. Step one is define the project. So as a teacher, you need to define the project and the learning outcomes that you want the students to achieve. So, when you're giving learners this project, you as a teacher, you have to define the, the objectives which, which you want by the end of the lesson, learners to be knowing. So, make sure that the project is relevant and interesting to the students. Don't choose a project which is a bit boring. Of course, you have to choose a project that is interesting to the learners in order to catch learners' attention. The next, the next step is form groups. Divide your students into pairs on their interest, basing, sorry, basing on their interest, ability, and learning styles. Ensure that the groups are divided and each student has a clear role in the group. So make sure each student in the group has a role to play. Not that some students are seated there and others are active. No, each and every student should be active during this project. Thank you. Let me call my next. Another point was that provide guidance and support. In this way, as a teacher, you encourage at least to take control and take guidance about the group, group members, provide support in the materials needed in order to encourage, encourage them in their group works. Go on checking their work in, group, in groups. Keep on check, checking and at least you, you find out whether they are still on the same track. Then another point is encouraging collaboration. And in collaboration, this involves, this encourages you as a teacher to encourage your students within their groups at least to, to, to pick members of the same values, members who can be beneficial, and even, in, even take the job choosing those people who, who want he or she is free to speak with. Thank you. Thank you so much. Dr. Nadia, I'm Dr. Nadia. 
we're going to start well to end this part as part A. Uh, as the last point says, celebrate the success. When the project are complete, celebrate the success to, to his work by commenting. You comment on the work according to four comments like excellent, very good, uh, so good, keep it up, uh, and other words. Uh, in nutshell, by giving the student and peers or others, they can facilitate project based learning and help students develop teamwork, communicating skills. Um, and communicating skills by the way. Whom call my colleagues to start part B? Good afternoon to everyone. I'm Karuni Alex, Chitapeni, Uganda, and Economics. So I'm going to proceed to part B, which is learning beards. And upon learning beards, a teacher is supposed to choose the beards which is in line with what is supposed to be taught by the student. And the first step under learning beards is to define the project. By defining the project, a teacher is supposed to define the project based on the relevant and challenging interests and skills to the students and that project should be in line with the students' abilities to enable them to participate actively in the project work. So remember, while dealing with project-based learning, we deal with hands-on work. Therefore, that's why a teacher is supposed to choose the project which is relevant and it is in line with students' interests and the abilities. Then when we come to the second step under learning beards, we shall say that we form the beards. A teacher is supposed to form the beards. Remember we say beard beads can be groups of two, two, and when we form these groups, a teacher is supposed to make sure that you choose the students according to their abilities, such that one can help another while implementing the, the learning beards. So the groups to be formed are supposed to be in pairs, and each pair a teacher is supposed to make sure that students in the groups are having complementary skills. And those skills will enable each student to help one another in order to make the objectives for the project to be fulfilled effectively. Therefore, while using project-based learning, Learning beards is also a complementary method or step to be used to implement project-based learning. Let me invite my next colleague to come and take us through the other steps pertaining to learning beards. Thank you very much. I start from where my colleague Stopped. Another step, establish learning objectives. As a teacher, you must establish learning objectives for the project, and those objectives must align with the curriculum and the desired outcomes. These objectives should be specific, measured, and achievable. Another step, as a teacher, you are supposed to provide resources to the students. Uh, the students can use those resources to complete the project. 
these resources may include textbooks, online resources, or any access to experts in the field. Uh, allow me to call my other colleague to conclude this uh, stage. Uh, good afternoon, dear teacher trainees. Uh, my name is Semanda Gaddafi, a teacher trainee in Uganda and in Australia. After that, I continue where my brother has stopped with the steps on learning diets. After that, we monitor the progress of each diet as the work of the project so that you provide the feedback and guidance as needed to ensure that the students, they meet the learning objectives. After that step, we conclude by presenting the findings. After the project is complete, the next step is to have each day present its findings to the whole class. Uh, the next step, the projects, when the project is complete, uh, you have to call each diet to present its findings to the whole class. Uh, how can this help the students? This step will help the students and it will give them the opportunity to share what they got and reflect on their experience. So thank you very much. Another step, uh, another question part C was how to use snowboard discussion in the project-based learning. A snowboard discussion is a collaborative learning activity where students work in small groups and then gradually join other groups to share and discuss their ideas. This technique can be used in project-based learning to encourage students to share their ideas and collaborate with other peers. Here are some of the steps you can follow to use project-based learning by using a snowboard discussion. Step one is to identify the project, choose a real-world problem or challenge that students can investigate and solve through a project-based learning approach. Step two is form small groups. Divide students into small groups of three to four each. Assign a specific task or subtopic related to the project to each group. Step three is initial discussion. Allow each group to discuss their assigned task or subtopic for a specific period, such as 10 to 15 minutes. Encourage students to share their ideas and opinions. Step four is snowball discussion. After the in initial discussion, ask each group
group to send one representative to join another group. The representative will share their group's ideas and listen to the ideas of the other groups. The groups should discuss their ideas for another 10 to 15 minutes. Another step is to expand the discussion. Repeat the snowball discussion process where representatives from each group join another group to share and discuss their ideas. Encourage students to build on each other's ideas and find solutions to the project problem or challenges. Another step is reflection. At the end of the snowball discussion, ask students to reflect on the process and what they have learned. This reflection can be done individually or in small groups. Um, you, can, you, can, you can use these ways while you're dealing with the project-based learning and the snowball discussion. Yeah, you have to brainstorm, you have to, to ask your students for feedback, and you have to make sure that the problem is solved. Therefore, the snowball discussion technique can be powerful and it can also be a powerful tool in the project-based learning as it allows students to collaborate, share ideas, and build on each other's knowledge in a structured and supportive way. Thank you so much.